I did not tell you to jump in the car, okay? Anyway, this is a piece of copper. Pretty heavy, pretty thick, solid copper. I needed it. I'll explain why here in a second. But for right now, I gotta use the right tools, or at least the right tools that I have in order to make sure I can cut this because I have a feeling that if I put it on my wood saw blade miter saw, it would probably have an issue. So, oh, by the way, I cleaned this. Like, look at that. Oh yeah. I'm actually not sure why I grabbed that. Uh, what I really need is the grinder that has a sander on it, but I gotta put a grinding thing on it in order to grind. Much better. Safety third. I mean, honestly, not a bad cut. I think it's not perfect. That's just the marker, but not a bad cut. I just gotta mark it out. And do the nuts and the other one. Now that I have two cuts that actually turned out pretty good, I think. I mean, they don't have to be perfect. This isn't like, you know, building a rocket or anything like that. Now I'm gonna use my uh, sander and just kind of like make the edges not so brutal. You know, I don't want to cut myself. I think they're actually pretty, pretty close. Right, I mean, look at that. Not bad, definitely not perfect, but just free balling it, no big deal. So I have my nice exotic piece of wood. I think this is either uh, imported oak from the, uh, I'm just kidding. It's probably the cheapest board I found at Lowe's at some point, but anyways, it's wood that I have and it's perfect length. Oh yeah, that's perfect, probably. Yeah, that's perfect, okay. so. It's perfect width. Now I just gotta cut just a few sections off. So far, so good. Oh, you always look so happy as you do. Oh, I like you so much. All right, so. Get a little handy dandy thingy me jig right here. This one looks good. coming together. If you haven't figured it out by now, I am making some homemade makeshift, just to have no idea what I'm doing, bus bars. Because I have a weak point. And I'll have to explain it here in a little bit, but basically I didn't like the options I was looking at online. And I just wanted something like, like really future proof, really thick, be able to handle a lot, you know, like I just wanted something real solid, you know what I mean? So I wanted to make my own. I'm not saying I know how to do that. I'm just saying that's what I'm doing, just winging it. The best part about cleaning all this up is that I made it all dirty again. That's pretty much just because I took everything that was on the shelf and I moved it over here, deal with it later, because I want to put this downstairs in the closet and it is going to somehow turn into a battery shelf. I built this thing, it's like a little platform so I could roll it around, which has been extremely helpful. And I was thinking about removing it just because it's gonna be a permanent fixture. Probably, maybe, I have no idea, but I think I'm just gonna keep it on because I don't wanna take it apart because the bottom is super solid. It actually strengthened the overall flexibility of it. So. All I gotta really do is just clean it off. And I don't have a lot of cleaner stuff, so I'm gonna use all-purpose cleaner. Wow, okay. Huh. I got it all moved down here. I end up taking most of it apart. Uh, that's like that, that's like that. But now that I got this down here, I probably should have cleared out this room, which as you can see is messy like most of my life. And I wanna take a second to explain exactly why I'm going down this path. 
So look at this. This is my setup. I've changed, altered, added, removed, done all kinds of stuff since I made videos about it. The biggest problem is the batteries, right? I got two batteries there that I purchased, one battery sent for review, and I have a couple more batteries coming for review. So it's like the battery area thing is just piling up. Also, this is four gauge wire, right? This is roughly 200 amps worth of draw power. When this thing kicks in, these lines get hot. <laughs> <laughs> it is drastically undersized now for the load. And then I went and looked at these that I purchased off Amazon, realized how skinny they are and how they are not really rated for that much power. Especially if I expand this with not only two more batteries, but then, you know, future expansion, it's just gonna get worse. So I'm like, screw it. I'm gonna put a big old bus bar in there and I'm gonna future proof that. And then, yeah. As it sits right now, I actually have like laptop mining stuff, all that, it's all kind of turned off just because crypto is, well, crypto at the moment. This is where I want to put the shelf. Take that out, relocate crap, and then shelf. Side note, since I'm kind of getting everything out of the way, this is the uh, air conditioning unit thing, thing that I'm working on testing to see how well it does it keeps this room probably four or five degrees cooler that's about it so obviously i need a bigger unit and it wasn't really meant for this anyways so yeah but i put a bucket underneath it and it is almost full that's that's about a week and a half maybe two weeks that's a lot of water i'm glad i paid attention to that because that would have started overfilling voila i had to literally unscrew that thing from the wall and you can tell it was installed with the house or whatever they cut it or whatever anyway so uh that's gonna be that i should probably vacuum because i have never vacuumed in here and nor do i ever think i will again so while it's cleared i should do that but this is god now i kind of want like all of this over there but i know i'm putting a shelf there but i'm just saying like this would be a nice little area maybe fireproof some stuff, but this could be a cool area to have just like all the things. Believe it or not, that was actually a huge pain in the ass to get in there. It's amazing. I tried to do something lazy, like I don't want to take apart all this and blah, 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 but really it causes a bunch of struggle <laughs> because I had to like Jenga that shit in there. Not Jenga, well, what's that other game? Tetris. Yeah, I had a Tetris that shit in there. And I'm gonna call that a stopping point for the night. As you can see, it got kind of lined up. We got six slots in between. I got this one is uh, gonna be the shortest one. I mean, only by only by one notch. But basically, I, I figured I could use the top for storage stuff. That way I can have like battery, battery, and then on the bottom battery. So it's easier to not only lift the batteries up to it, but also manage it and do that kind of thing. So. Um, and I'm definitely gonna have to do something with the lighting because that bulb is gonna be blocked. It's gonna have, basically have no lighting in here once I have the shelves. So I'm thinking a strip of light going up over here on both sides, right? That's gonna be shining in. That's gonna be pretty cool. And then a strip of light, it's gonna be up there. You gotta figure out what lights I wanna put in there but I think that'd be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and take a fast forward. I've had to put a few layers on this and it looks like it's still a little juicy there because it hasn't dried at the bottom, but uh, that's the red. Ooh, some of it's, some of it's probably needs a little dry, but either way, that's the red block. That's the black block. They're not perfect, but they should probably do what I'm trying to do. So let me let me lay this out, move my crap around that I moved. Oh, oh, here's that. And then here's this. Right? Just like that. Pretty cool. And then got some insulators here. I need bolts for. So here's the idea, here's the idea, all right? So I'm gonna take these, stick that on there. It's gonna be my insulator. So my bus bars, my distribution bars are gonna come up off the bars just like that. I know that's probably a little high, 
but it's gonna give me that insulation from the wood because even though wood is not an actual conductor, uh, it's an insulator, wood still has the ability to conduct wood under certain conditions. So, um, that's what I gotta make right there. So, this is gonna be the main lug, right? It's gonna go through here. It's gonna go through the bar. This is gonna go through that. This is gonna go through that. And then the spacer from that is gonna go on top of that, right? So I have a big enough bar. And then I'm gonna put a piece of acryl acrylic that's gonna be the same size as this, that's gonna cover all of this, right? That way I can just attach a piece of acrylic to the top. That way I at least have some sort of a of a protection thing going on on each side. That way it's just not 100% exposed. And there we have it. I've cleaned it kind of up. I did a few things because basically here, here's my thought. I really want to use like a drill press, right? Just a drill press. That's going to allow me to get a very straight cut or a drill right into there. I don't have any way to get a 90 degree, but I do want this to be uh, as 90 degree as possible. I think what I really want to do is probably make a run up to Home Depot, try to get some uh, some real basic stuff like this, right? Probably take, probably take a couple of these with me, make sure I get some good bolts, take these little things right here just to make sure everything fits right. Um, and then I'm gonna get a piece of acrylic or some sort of plastic that I can use to mold over this and then just kind of go from there. So these are distribution points. These are the mounts right here. And these are going to be the main lugs. I think overall, this is turning out pretty good. I took a huge side detour. I went to Home Depot to get the screws and stuff. So obviously <laughs> this kind of thing. But basically I'm making a little homemade fly trap. I cut out the lid there to put a piece of plexiglass on it. Right now it's uh, epoxying on there and drying. And then I got to do another one to seal it up even more because it's not sitting perfect. But anyways, the idea here is I got three of these. It's going to go in here just like so. Might rotate them a little off so they're, they're, they're not exactly on each other. But then you put some stuff in the bottom like a dead fish or some fly bait or whatever. They fly in, they drown, they die. And every once in a while you open it up and drain it all out. So uh, I'm working on that just because where I work, there's a lot of flies and yeah. But homemade fly control aside, I got this, which I'm gonna use for the two holes that actually do not require me to thread them, right? But I do want them to be straight and I wanna test this thing out. So um, this, yes, this hole right here and this hole right here, both of which can be not like threaded or don't have to be threaded. All they have to do is fit the uh, bolt that goes for this, which is right here, or at least something similar to that shorter one. I actually couldn't find one that fit that was shorter, but anyways, uh, it's gotta fit that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually see if I can use this to drill a straight hole. Not too bad at all. Overall, I got what I wanted done. Um, try as I might though, I cannot find a short enough version of this, which I couldn't find at Walmart or at Lowe's, Home Depot, sorry. Although, I wonder if, nah, I think the threading's different. Anyways, um, since tomorrow I'm gonna take this to work, I'm gonna use the drill press, and then I'm gonna use the threading kit. That way I can take these different sizes that I purchased, right? So that's gonna go right there, and then that's gonna go right there. It's gonna go all the way around. It's gonna go on both of them. So uh, I'm gonna make it to where I can thread those and then probably run over to the local hardware store near the work and be like, yo, I need something shorter because basically that just doesn't go in. It's just, it's too long. There you go. I don't really need the PVC glue. I was originally gonna glue it up, but I'm like, well, it's not like it's getting jostled around or needs anything. It's just a matter of funneling the flies in. And then this, I got this drying for the second. Uh, is that good? Yeah, okay. So for the second thing of epoxy, I uh, just put a generous amount all around it. So 
The idea really is this, is the flies are going to smell whatever crap's in there. They're going to go down in there, and then they're not going to be able to get out, right? Because they won't be able to find the hole. They're going to be drawn to the light up here. They're going to think this is the way out, right? So they're going to exhaust themselves until they end, uh, eventually drown. <laughs> I'd record this, but I really need two hands. Oh, so good girl. You're so good girl. You're like, oh my gosh, I want to go for a walk. It's like time for a walk. Yeah. Okay, look at this. Look at this. I mean, I figured out this top shelf, not a thing, right? If I put this top shelf here, I'm going to have like this much room to put stuff. So maybe I'll put it on later. Maybe I won't. I don't really know. But for right now, I want the lights. So uh, I also went through and wired some lights. Up here, kind of temporarily, not exactly great wiring. A little peak right there. Not great wiring, but I wanted to illustrate what has been going through my mind. Um, today I tapped a distribution bus bar that's gonna be replacing the bus bars down there. I haven't messed with those yet because I still haven't finished the base plate, but the more I look at this, why are you barking at me? Why are you barking at me? Anyways, the more I look at this, the more I, I was really trying to avoid buying two 45 inch, like really thick copper bus bars to go across. Like my idea was I can have a positive or a negative down here and then the opposite up here, right? And then I could do the same thing down there on that shelf, right? And then like, I don't know. I don't really know if that's going to work out well in my head. But I wanted the ability, and I just hooked this up just for an example. So this is the wrong color, but it's what was laying around. Um, so every set of batteries is going to be 24 volts. This is a brand new set that I just got. It's from a company called Dr. Prepare. I got to do some testing on this, see what I like about it, do a little review. But I have those batteries. I got those batteries. I got that battery right? They're all 24 volts. So if I were to set those all right here on the shelf, have the exact equal number or like length of cable going to each one, right? And then each one of those going to a little 100 amp circuit breaker, right? And pop, I could turn it off, whatever, like a quick little, quick little disconnect, right? And then I was also considering a shunt on each one, but I'm not really sure I'm sold on that idea. But anyways, so each one would be going down to this. This would be connecting to the positive, and then the negative would be running up to the negative, right? My idea was I could turn off each one, control each one, protect each one just by flick of a button. I can either have them all on or I can have them all turned off or whatever. One at a time, doesn't matter. So basically without a bus bar to make sure the power is distributed evenly especially because these are all mismatched batteries even though they're the same chemical makeup uh life pal let's see does this say deep cycle it does not say deep cycle but anyways it's got the same specifications i think as the other ones so the bus bar is going to allow me to get equal distribution of power and if i were to wire these all in sequence i won't be able to add you know, like a cutoff for each one, which is something I really wanted to do. I wanted individual protection since I'm running each individual battery at 24 volts, like in parallel, I wanted to be able to turn off each 24 volt set of batteries. That of course will get everything on the ground cleared up. I could start cleaning this fire hazard up, uh, switch around some of the things I got going on over there as far as distribution and all that kind of try to figure that out a little bit better because it's looking a little shady not gonna lie but for now i really need to just kind of stop this for the moment just because basically the next step's going to take a while again it's getting close to the end of the night for me because you know i still have a full-time job but um 
Let me show you what I did on my distribution bar today. After learning how to drill and tap threads and do all that other kind of stuff, so this is what I come up with, right? So underneath the bottom, I have not actually done any washers or anything like that. I literally just stuck a few bolts in here just to mock it up, right? But here is what the end result is basically going to look like. I'm going to have studs everywhere, everywhere, of course, but these in the middle, those connect to the insulators. The insulators are going to be connected to these blocks. I have to drill a hole through the block and then countersink on the uh, bottom of it to where the bolt doesn't uh, protrude from underneath. That way I can put this on the wall without it being uneven. But it's going to sit something like that right that essentially is going to be my new bus bar and it's super thick copper right this thing can probably handle 1500 amps at like a 65c rise or something like that um, but it's going to be super big super capable and this is going to be a main line this one will also have a main line. So these are the two in and out. And this is all the other small distribution uh, units. Most likely I'm only gonna need three, but this is all about future proofing. Um, the idea with this, this is a little washer that I have. So once I connect the main line, I can stick this washer on it. And then I got some plexiglass, which I do not have out here. I lied, I had some close. So basically I'm gonna cut this and I'm going to make this big, do like right there, but it's gonna sit on the washer, it's gonna be drilled into the holes, and it's just gonna barely cover, right? It's just gonna barely cover that main lug. But, and I could also flip that lug on, uh, upside down if I really have to, but anyways, this, once I kind of get it cut, I'm gonna melt it, I'm gonna explore some options to kind of make it bend over to give like just some protection. That way I don't accidentally drop something on both the positive and the negative, causing a crazy short out because that would suck. Also, so I don't kill myself. Hey, Luna. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Okay, I did not expect that. So I've been calling around in Wichita and I found a guy who said he has some bars that I can come take a look at that he might give me a pretty good deal on. We'll see. Either way, building this system out without bus bars is not making sense in my head. So I owe it to myself to at least go check out what he has. Dang, this truck is like, dude, I turned on the heater and I could not see. Like I, I seriously could not see, it was like this. It looks better on camera now that the heater's been on a little bit, but obviously that's dirty. I just like wiped this down. That was dangerous. Like, I was a little worried for a second. I really need to get old blue out more. Yeah. This is where it's at right here, boy. Tell you what. It's where the magic happens. Right here. Holes about every 10 or 12 inches. Well, that's right. I'll be putting more holes in it anyway. I think one, oh, shit. And then we got. There it is. It ain't clean. But man, I got this for at least half the cost, if not more, than what I would have been if I ordered it online. So I got a little bit of grinding, a little bit of cleaning. But I'll tell you what, that's a big ass bus bar. And really, I just got a bigger bus bar because that's what he had in stock. Look at this. So, tarnished? Untarnished. I definitely needed to sand this down, though, because um, let's say if I connected a lug to that, right? That's not a very good connection. But connect a lug to that, and that is pure copper, right? Nice, clean edge for the best possible connection. I think I'm gonna call this a night. Um, pretty much got everything drilled except for the mounting holes. So I got more of these coming, just a little bit taller ones. I'm pretty sure the new ones are still M6 uh, screws, but I'm gonna have to double check before I go drilling holes. Um, not threading or anything just making a hole for that one so 
I think I'm going to put four in each one because I think I, I ordered two sets of four. That way it'll be nice and sturdy up on that basically sheet metal. And then I also think it's either up here or somewhere up there that I have strips of aluminum that I could drill to give it some backing. I don't know, I could be wrong. I'll have to double check on that. Actually, I just realized I've been recording this for multiple days going through this project and no, I have done, not done my hair. So uh, I've been recording this for multiple days going through this project and I'm, I'm just not gonna get it all done in one video. So probably just gonna have to make this a wrap. Part one, part two will be mounting and getting the battery switched over. Also, part two will include changing over the uh, distribution bus bars to these. So uh, I gotta make some new wires. Obviously the four rock came in and all that. So, and I still have to mount that bus bar to this. So still got some more to do. So definitely more in part two. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and have yourself a great day.